We thought about when did we meet the last time, and it uh, came out that the first time when we met, it was 1994 uh, in uh, Madrid, then in 1996 here in Vienna, and then in 2005 in Paris. And all that meetings, all these meetings were the meetings of the foundations of information science. It's a community which is already based also on, uh, on systems thinking, on complexity thinking, on cybernetic thinking and so on. And uh, uh, so we meet here for the fifth, for the fourth time. And uh, so Peter Yaki is the Henry R. Luce Professor at the Center for Complex System Studies. Uh, at the Kalamazoo College in Kalamazoo, in Michigan. But he is also the leader, the head of the Budapest Complex Systems and Computational Neuroscience Group of the Wigner Research Center for Physics of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in Budapest. And uh, he will give a lecture, as we already heard, in the morning on Luigi Ricciardi. Um, who passed away last year, and uh, uh, he will um, uh, make a memorial lecture on that, and uh, along the development of biology and how systems thinking came into biology. So, please, Peter, it's your turn. Thank you so much. So this is a memorial lecture for Luigi Ricciardi, who was very influential for the series of conferences that we have done. So, so. so this is from Robert Trappis, obituary. I had the I had, for he, had the pleasure of meeting <coughs> at the first European meeting on cybernetics and system research in Vienna in 72. Then he organized a chair a symposium on biocybernetics and theoretical biology. It was such a success that I invited Luigi to organize and chair a symposium also at the next meeting in 1974 and then again at all the following biannual meetings. 2010, and I met him for the last time. <coughs> the symposium organized by him usually attracted the largest number of contributors with high quality presentations. So that is the reason that we felt that EMC CSR in 2012 it's a lecture. Thank you for coming. <coughs> I made some correspondence with Tonya Ricciardi, uh, which is daughter and some of his colleagues, and to give some details about his life, his contribution to biocybernetics, some but also to the development of the field. So this is see here that trapper um does anybody have a pointer by the important so this very serious tall guy is Luigi and then his, his friend and colleagues working in biological cybernetics is Francesco Benfilia and then the ladies the students former students of Luigi became professors of mathematics. <coughs> Laura Sacher got to know in Turin, and Amalia Nobile in Salerno. And this guy is here, is Len Tronker from the Cal State at Pomona, a strong influence in the systems. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I just touch the door. Len Tronquil from Hall Street, Pomona, just going into retirement. I also made some correspondence with him 
we didn't, we were not able to identify where it was it. People had different opinions. So probably in 1980 or 1982, uh, that was a meeting here. So what I will do today? So Luigi lived, worked in Naples. We spent seven years in Chicago, but I understand that he simply hated it. That was so cold for him. So, the first time when he managed to get a job to Italy, went back. But still, it was an influential period, also in Chicago. And at the conference that he organized in Salerno, about biomathematics, a wonderful book emerged from this conference. Then he organized many symposia here, as you already know. I just mentioned one year, a typical year in Vienna. A little about neurons and neural networks. His main interest was stochastic models of single neural activities, little about networks, contributed also to population models and population dynamics, and then he organized a series of conferences about biological computation. So just a little about, about his work. So he was born, died in Naples, of course, is Vesuvio, and yet the Japanese postdoc Hiromi Sino, now a professor of mathematics at Hiroshima University. And then I meet Hiromi, we are speaking with each other in Italian language, but what he really is at Italian. So this effect includes Professor Richardi and Mimura has worked on, on partial differential equations, applying to biological problems, so this is the anatomy. And <coughs> actually, I told you during this correspondence that Luigi was perfectly surprised at the news people that he obtained the Italian Royal Champion Medal when he was 17. And Astoria, Astoria herself is a dedicated mathematician now, a professor of mathematics at the University of Napoli. And this is a wedding photo uh, of this physicist, Kimiko Nagakawa. And here are the two wedding pictures. One is Eduardo Paganello, one of the founders of the Italian cybernetic, a very famous Italian mathematician working with information processing, Ardo de Luca. So why do I show this? So Paganello. Paganello, Eduardo Paganello, Influential paper in the first volume of the Journal of Theoretical Biology that was about the thinking machines and thought processes. Basically, he unified <coughs> the vector of these equations <coughs> and the neural activities and the happy and learning equations. So, Luigi himself wrote about Kainia kind of Lobuta in 1993, so now 20 years later. So Cagliano brought cybernetics to Italy uh, <coughs> and partially motivated by Enrico Ferro, who in 1954 supported a series of seminars in computers. And Norbert Wiener, of course one of our heroes, came to Italy and gave a series of lectures in Rome. So Cagliano became acquainted with Valentino, besides Valentino Brandenberg, uh, I might have mentioned soon, a specialist in psychiatry and mostly in neuroanatomy, and who joined the Institute of Theoretical Physics, a rare combination, <coughs> by the Italian National Research Council, the GNR. It promises that the Institute of Theoretical Physics of the Naples University 
So that was already a physicist, a mathematician, and Breutenberg, a neuroanatomist. And so that was something, okay, let's focus our attention to the mathematical description of the brain activity. So that goes back to the program of Macaulay. So it was the beginning of a very happy period as which he wrote for Neapolitan research in physics, mathematics, and cybernetics. Coelho uh, was the founding director of the Instituto de Cibernetica, the Consiglio Nazionale della Ricerca della Ricerca. And so Breuter, 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 which are his friends, such as the Venturia, such as the Dean, also to speak a little about Breitenberg, who died a few months ago. So Breitenberg was in the 90s, early 1960s in Naples, which I was working in Bolzano, and then he was the director of the Department of Structure and Function of Natural Nervous at the Max Planck Institute, Biologische Kibernetik in Tübingen. And his research was mainly, mainly on combination of neuroanatomy and brain theory and statistical approach to cortical structures and cerebral, cerebral cortex and cerebellar cortex, quantitative anatomical studies, both of mouse and human cortical structures, orientation specifically in the visual cortex of primates, connected with psychophysical studies humans, neurological theory of language. Uh, the picture is argued that is a very important paper that Reuter wrote in 1962. That was in a journal, in, journal of comparative neurology, an important journal for the morphologist. So this is a note on Miano architectonics, but here, quite contrary to this approach, the cybernetical program, Macau, Pitts, Wiener, Neumann, that is, you don't see now in, in morphological journals. Here is another name, Laurea, in the 60s. I will mention this name again a few, few sites later. So, the <coughs> mathematical approach of <coughs> that time. Coupled with the first paper that Uchi wrote, the Esposito was published in the Kibernetic. Kibernetic, that was the predecessor, but it's not the biological <coughs> cybernetic, the Springer Journal, on some distribution functions for nonlinear switching elements with finite dead time. And then, uh, that time, in that, that year, in Coyle School, there were another mathematician, Aldo de Luca, So, reverberations and control of neural network. So that was the, and the probabilistic description of asymptotic theorems. So that time we had a Macalopis model, but we also had a little more. And then there was a question, deterministic and how to use deterministic and stochastic models for uh, describing single neural behavior. Francesco Ventrilla, retired recently from the Institute of Cibernetica, and Richard published a paper in the 1970s, probabilistic models for determining the input output relationship in formalizing models. So that was the first spirit in the early, late 1960s, early 70s, to find out the conceptual failures of uh, uh, neural models. Years 
Magisztrál Bóli Börténkon Stochastic Resonance, Ludwig Wolfgang Stochastic Resonance in Europe Systems, de last year's book. Tehát szintén, hogy Nello Bóli a Korea Metemet is tudjuk, hogy ez. Szóval ha volt Csikágo, Kolkál, the words of Kolkál. So Luigi came to Chicago in 69 as assistant professor of mathematical biology. At that time, there was, so you know, that Chicago is organized with these committees. There was a famous committee on mathematical biology, uh, founded by Dashevsky. And there was personal stories behind it. So it was being expanded and was expected to morph into Department of Theoretical Biology. Robert Wolfgang. Luci was among a group of young new assistant professors who went on to distinguish careers. Arthur Winfrey, Stuart Kaufman, Ludovic Slatkin. Then Jack Cowett. His name is very well known in the neurodynamics of the Wilson Cowett Brothers. But became the director of the Committee on Mathematical Biology. Levins, Richard Lewington, before he moved to Harvard, as well as recent recruits who were already well known, Stuart Rice, or a court, many visitors, Michael Arby, McAuliffe himself, Wilson, Renny Tom, Kaya Yellow. So at that time, neural nets were a hot topic. Uh, that was just a year, maybe earlier than the perceptron, the Misty Puppet perceptron. Appeared and apparently killed neural network research for 15 years. Uh, a Kalok, who had invented neural nets 25 years earlier, was still active. He had a number of students working in that area, as Michael Arby, for instance. And Stuart Kaufman had recently shown that related Boolean models, so that was which became the famous NK model, could also be used to describe genetic systems. Since Luci had worked on neural nets with Cagliano and then Luca, <coughs> it seemed natural that he should supervise my thesis on neural nets. My thesis showed that techniques from linear algebra would be used to study neural nets if they were considered as polynomials of their finite fields, rather than as a linear threshold device. Linear threshold device, binary linear. That was the, that was the early mechanical approach. So Paul defended his thesis in 70, and Kajanyalo was in the committee. So people from the Chicago group, Harry Tuckman, wrote also important papers on the, <coughs> two books on theoretical neurobiology, and then papers on stochastic models, also about uh, computational form of what you might call of computational psychiatry. Simon Levin, that time in Princeton, he builds on Leo Glass in Montreal for many years, Charlie Swiss in North Carolina. So they formed a very, very, very influential and strong group. So Chicago was just cold. So Luigi went back to Italy, first in Turin, then in Salerno. He also had that not only a Japanese vibe, but also had strong uh, connections in Japan. He spent a year in Osaka. So there was a famous conference on biomathematics. And this is just half of the paper that I mentioned. So what were the key concepts? 30 something years ago. Robert Rosen. Robert Rosen was there. Very influential, controversial personality also introduced the concept of anticipatory systems. So that time he was thinking about feed forward control. Uh, Hermann Hacken from Stuttgart founded the synergetics in the early 70s. At so that time it was already a more or less established science. So he spoke as many times later also that mathematical methods of synergetics and how to apply to self organizing systems. Arnold Golden from Leeds about the mathematics of excitation and Valentino Breitenberg himself. That was already the beginning when he outlined the theory of cerebral cortex, which became a subject of the book with Alan Schuss. 
20 years later. Sonichiro Amari, the famous Japanese neuromathematician, actually was the head of the Department of Mathematical Engineering at the University of Tokyo before he moved to Riken. So that was the mathematical theory of self-organizing systems. My friend from Budapest, Eleni Labos, about information processing in neural networks. Radil Weiss from Prague, the Institute of Physiology from the Czech, that time Czechoslovak Academy of Science, Human Visual Perception and Recognition. And we shall be at his uh, former students, Amelia Nobile, Laura Sacher Dotter, that was about population models. And a class of difference equations, so finite time equations, modeling growth processes, that was about a discrete version of the complex. <coughs> So that was it. the fields where the people were active and the book reflected very much. Uh, the conference was a big success. <coughs> so Luigi organized a series uh, symposium on biocybernetics and mathematical biology. Uh, first time I attended this meeting in 1984, that was the first time I had a chance to see uh, Luigi and then a few months later in Vegas. And also that was a very good place to send students to give their first international presentations. And we just started work when there are only 20 students here and we strongly hope that the, that the meeting Start will attract more and more students who don't have to try that it should be critical uh, of the whole movements of system theory and cybernetics. So where are the students? Do you know? So in 89, that was a meeting, just like also just what kind of topics were in this meeting. <coughs> so more in ideas that from Las Palmas about visual movement discrimination and from our own group. Well, a former young student now began uh, to ask show what value about self-organization in the flow visual system. Elemir Lavos about formal neuroness that was still in the style of Cayenello. <laughs> and here is Francesco Laurilla who wrote it who wrote this paper with Luigi Ricciardi in 1960, so 38 years later. He was speaking here about neurodynamical models for time processing. And spatial temporal neural processes. And of course, neural oscillators was a hot topic, still it is. Population of integrated fire oscillation, the difference just so I, I, I wanted to show you, just to give back a little bit of flavor, uh, 40 years now, predator prey systems, competing populations, and, and genetics was becoming so some more more papers about gene location, biochemical clocks, and. Uh, So the first crossing time problem, that is a key problem in stochastic uh, neural models. And there was a paper from Choria from Rostov on informational aspects of biocybernetics. So just I wanted to tell something uh, about these conferences. So a, a little bit of science. So single cell models. So the original mechanical neuron is a binary threshold device. So a neuron performs a computation, here, here we have the input, and, out, and with that weighted sum of the input is larger than the threshold, then the neuron generates a signal if not then remains in silence. Actually, the network, LMA Labos showed uh, how Formal neural networks can produce long cycles and got the whole big EMC as a, a EMC as a R award in 1984. Of course, other types of neurons could be defined. 
is the linear neuron, is the output, is the sum of the wind is input. And there are modern features, somehow the combination of the threshold devices and the, and the, neural, and the linear devices. So now just 60 years earlier. Hutchkin and Huxley formulated the endodes. Of course, before the formulation of the Hutchkin Huxley model, many things were already known. So, McCallow consciously decided not to put his formal model the physiological details because he wanted to grasp the logical basis of neural processing. So, then after having the patch clamp, voltage clamp, uh, the voltage clamp experience. Uh, and it was basically to measure the transport processes, processes through the membrane. So the stimulus comes from sodium, potassium, and chloride uh, ions. So there was a detailed mathematical model. The original version was a four-dimensional ordinary differential equation, ordinary because the spatial variation was suppressed by using a very clever experimental technique called the space camp clamp experiment. So the four-dimensional model is, is an equation for the propagation of the membrane potential and there are gating variables for the sodium and potassium channel. There are four-dimensional equation. Even in 1952, Hodgkin and Huxley, using electromechanical calculations, were able to make uh, incredibly detailed and, and, and nice uh, simulations. So they were able to solve the equation and even meet parameter studies, even some sensitivity analysis. So basically, that was a, a formal biophysically detailed model uh, of the uh, So now that we have the general description of the ionic flow through the cell membrane, so an equation for the membrane potential. So this was a four-dimensional equation. Still computers were in the elementary form. So it was good to make some approximative solutions. And so what to do, of course, two dimensional is much less than four, and the paper is two-dimensional. It was possible to make geometrical analysis. Fitzhugh in 55 and the Nagumo in the early 60s generated a two-dimensional approach of the four-dimensional equation by separating the time scales for, for rapid and slow variables and assuming that there is an algebraic constraint. But that was not a systematic reduction technique, but it worked well. And some variable was substituted by the steady state value. So now we had a slow variables and fast variables, and then it was possible to make mathematical calculations to apply bifurcation theory to show how the equilibrium solutions can bifurcate to get periodic behavior, which was very important. What kind of inputs uh, are able to elicit periodic responses from the neurons? So everything happened. So what I thought so far that was purely deterministic, in, using deterministic models. Richard uh, Richard was most interested in stochastic models. And actually that was the question, <coughs> that was the question, who given the neurons fibers, then they exceed the threshold. And then all these studies came out in the back influential book having <laughs> 500 citations or so that was published in the, <coughs> the series lecture notes in biomathematics. It was a, <coughs> that was his, uh, the most important book series that time in biomathematics. So the diffusion processes and related topics in biology. Uh, actually, no, I think it was 1977. <coughs> so what is behind? There was a classical paper versed in the model group. The, fractals, the random walk models for the spike activity of the single neurons, the biophysical journal in 64. <coughs> so the membrane potential was considered as a Brownian process, a 
continuous and continuous state space stochastic process, uh, more or less uh, a diffusion process, and uh, the corresponding uh, stochastic differential equation, stochastic differential equation, uh, start this model, and then of course there is a question so that to find out the transition time when the trajectories intersect uh, the threshold. So that was the starting point for the stochastic single cell models. Uh, Lucci summarized the results of the diffusion models of single neuron activity in a book edited by uh, Francesco Venturia uh, from, a, from a school that was organized in, in Capri in 1992. So basically, it was necessary to specify, so the stochastic models are specified in the diffusion processes uh, by the, these two coefficients, A1 and A2, and the classical, these are constants for the classical Brownian process, and this is a full, full and unlike a constant process, so this is linear, this is state dependent and linear in the state, and there is a non stationary version of the OR and the actually UU and the OU. And the Holstein processes. So, Richard and his students investigated these equations for 20 years or so and came out with the general solutions. So, one problem is the first passage time problem. So, when the voltage at particular place on the neuron which is a threshold, then an action potential is generated. So many point processes in biology have similar origins, it's called first passage times. So they occur when some underlying process first reaches a critical level of threshold. Even for simple models of this underlying process, simple I mean one-dimensional stochastic differential equations, there were very few analytical results. So simulations and heuristic approximation methods, several different types of behavior was identified. The mean current research activities are further development of these approximation methods. Actually, some results came from Luigi's student and Tuckwell, focusing now in Leipzig. So, when the threshold is a random variable, and the first time when x hits the y, which is not a moving barrier, not, not a constant, and they calculated the distributions. So just some hints about several other important papers and co-workers. Luigi worked with his students, Aniello Mojo, Kore, Amelia Nobile, Pepe Lansky from Prague, and, and then we had a very important collaborator with my Sato from Osaka, a paper, Sato said, well cited papers. And note to the evaluation of the first passage time programmatic densities, the diffusion process is related to in biology. It's a living paper. So they constitute the stochastic process. So that is, so far I spoke about single neurons. But of course people are interested in networks. And also there's a big question about whether the network, neural networks are organized mostly deterministically or what is the role of chance and stochasticity. My own mentor, Jan Santa Gotay, who celebrated his 100th anniversary this year, had a paper of, he speculated about specificity versus, it wasn't a short to tell randomness, so for the sake of safety, he wrote quasi randomness in cortical connectivity. And he played about problem with neural connection between deterministic randomness in the mid 80s. This is a picture uh, that was just 20 years ago in Kaku is Michael Arby, one of the most famous. Um, I think he considers himself as a uh, successor of the uh, cybernetician. He himself was a student of Nakalo. And this is an Santa Gotay in the Society. And by Santa Gotay was a mathematician, yet a paper with Alfred Rini. Rini is a very well known mathematician and a few 
to work on network telling, for example, the Erdős Rényi papers on random graphs. So, do you know your Erdős number? Is there anybody who has Erdős number? One, two, three.
So network theory and the application for the brain, this is something that people do uh, now. A few words about population dynamics, what we should also like. So theoretical biology basically uh, came out from Martin's essay. 1797, on exponential growth, and this forecast the end of world by overpopulation. And the more mathematical approach, the branching processes has been, has been introduced as early as 1873 by Galton and Watson, and still they are an important area of applied probability theory. So, Lucian Peters, with his friend, died very early in the early 50s, Renato Capocelli in Salerno. Is a diffuse model for population growth in random environment, published in the theoretical population by 1974, which is um, nine. A recent paper wrote on birth death processes and catastrophes two years ago with the Crescenzo Journal model and the Chapter. So this early, early paper came out with this is usually with Capocelli in Salerno during the years which are the spent in Salerno. So this is all the little as you see. A few minutes about the biocompletings. That was in 19, that was in just 10 years ago. Um, that was about evolution, which was a uh, 16. In summary, Sato, Mario, Marinaro, the very famous mathematician, he was working on, on the Brownian history, and um, which uh, wasn't there, I have to send this. So, Takayuki Hida. Another biocomplete, which was the last time, which was five years ago, he spoke about the scientists first of Wiener and Levy, after Brown. That's very, 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 very interesting lecture. Brown and motion was recognized as a scientific research object by Robert Brown in 1827, and then many scientists studied the motion. Uh, so Wiener and Levy, Studied Brownian motion, namely mathematics, and that is his, that is his best uh, so He appreciated their works and would like to know their results in a very important role in the study of the biological. So, uh, this is Luigi, this is, this is already look of 50 years later. So, that is the last picture that I found. Actually, that was something else. From the very last meeting, Luigi with Franz Pichler, uh, Linz. And I think this is a story personally I would like to send to Luigi very much the help of I got from him and I got many help to prepare these lectures from Tony Ricciardi, Nello Buono, Coriaco, Carl, Cerdote, Piero Seno, and Francesco Benferia. Many thanks for being here and to listen to this lecture from OG. Thank you.